400 foot flames, 2,000 degrees of scorching heat, 47,000 acres devoured. This wildfire is raging out of control. You gotta stay alert, hold that line. Uh, expedite. It's up to a team of experts to tame this fierce firestorm. It's gonna get a lot bigger. What will it take to stop one of nature's most powerful forces? Find out as we go onto the front lines of a California wildfire. p.m. September 3rd. A column of smoke is spotted in Henry Coe State Park in Northern California. Local firefighters scramble into action. This could turn out to be a routine brush fire, but given the scorching hot temperatures and bone dry vegetation, firefighters know they're facing perfect storm conditions for wildfire. Fire emergency. These firefighters are keeping a close watch. We do have a fire in the co-park, so we are responding. They're part of a statewide agency known as CAL FIRE. Affirmative. Affirmative. If there is a chance the fire could get out of hand, they need to be ready to send in reinforcements. First chiefs are getting there saying it's at least 50 acres with the potential for 10,000. Within the hour, their fears are confirmed. The blaze has jumped to 200 acres and shows no signs of slowing. The crews on the ground are powerless to stop its progress. Cal Fire makes a decision. It will declare this fire a statewide emergency. Dispatchers activate an incident command team made up of highly trained fire officers on call around the clock to respond to major wildfires anywhere in California. The observatory in the Cold Park, the time at 1347. The park is a firefighter's nightmare. The ridges slope up to 70%, making this one of the most inaccessible areas in the state, and one of the most favorable settings for wildfire, which climbs the hills like a ladder, scorching acres in minutes. The incident command team is facing a potential catastrophe. It's now midnight, and the CAL FIRE command team arrives at a local fire station for its first briefing. Taking charge is Robert Wallen, the new incident commander. In the next few hours, Wallen will scale up the operation from about 100 firefighters to nearly 1,000. We're trying to get over to Bear Mountain. By dawn, dozens more engines, fire crews, bulldozers, and aircraft from all over the state will arrive on the scene. Many will have to drive through the night. Logistically, that's a problem, because we're on the other side of that hill. The team has just six hours to draw up a plan of attack. We're gonna have some logistical challenges that uh, we'll need to sit down and talk about. Battalion Chief Derek Whitmer has been leading the operations here throughout the day. It's gonna be a logistical nightmare getting crews in and out. So they've got a structure group down here. These are all hunting cabins and, and like vacation cabins. Fire took one from us, but we ended up getting these folks out. So far, no life's lost. He has seen firsthand what the command team will go up against. This stretch here is almost 12 miles. The biggest thing is if this thing gets on the other side of Cordoza Ridge and down and starts burning back towards done, we got a lot of problems. You know, you're looking at six, seven, eight hundred homes. Chief Whitmer briefs the team on the incident, now officially designated the Lick Fire, in honor of nearby Lick Observatory. Okay, fire made some really significant runs. Um, when the fire actually originally started at 148, uh, and it was it was building rapidly on on our response in there, uh, we were getting uh, reports of 400 foot flame lengths. It's uh, grass, oak woodlands, a lot of timber, and a lot of chemise. Real steep country in there. Right away, the command team realizes they cannot send water trucks with the fire engines on the steep, narrow roads. They must find another way to use their engine crews. They agree on a bold strategy. Fight fire with fire. They'll send the engines close to the edge of the wildfire and attempt to 
brakes around it, burning off fuel on all four sides. They call this building a box around the fire. But if firefighters fail to close the lines before the fire pushes through, they'll have to fall back to a box of 30,000 acres or more. And if the wind picks up, the fire could outrun the firefighters. How do you see that playing out? You know, is it realistic to think we're going to be able to hold that part of the fire with, with any kind of significant wind event? Probably not. Okay. Any questions for me? First time for us together. It's been a while since we've been out for two years. First time with me. For Bob Wallen, this fire will be a true test of his leadership. He has never worked with this team, and the team itself has not had its turn on the active duty roster in two years. The decisions Wallen makes tonight will determine whether the fire is contained in a matter of days or stretches on for weeks. I'll let you do your jobs, and I'm not real vocal, not real loud, but if I have something to say, I'll tell you. I have all the comments in the world in you guys. It's going to be a good incident. It's going to run well, and uh, let's go from there.